Accountability and leadership. Especially today, people ask for accountability from the leaders, and especially in times of crisis, this becomes more and more important. We're going to keep it uh, always referring to actual events. And at the moment, when we look what's happening in the world out there, then we can say some of them do pretty well, but quite a number of them do, let's say, not really what is asked from them. And especially when you're in a leadership position, you must be aware of the fact that everything you say or do might be your last step before the next PR catastrophe happens. So in the last episode, we may have heard that Clemens Tonius, who was um, and is the owner of a large meat producing factory, we had a major COVID-19 outbreak in Germany due to uh, misbehavior of the leadership team who hired people from Romania who lived under, let's say, debatable conditions and due to the inhumane conditions and also the, well, let's say, poor sanitation levels. We had a coronavirus spike again in Germany, which led to the fact that some people suddenly couldn't travel anymore, had to cancel their vacation, and all that after lockdown was already lifted. And you may have heard about that because in the UK you also had some areas, and in the US you still have areas where you have thousands and thousands of new cases and still no one's taking accountability. Some areas now in the US have taken back the release of the lockdown, but many still fear to do so because they are afraid of losing voters. And still... Many leaders at the moment use this crisis in an opportunistic way to simply get rid of people they always wanted to get rid of. Now it's just an opportunistic moment where you say, oh, we have a crisis. Sorry, I have to let you go. And the phrase, I have to let you go, is already one of these euphemisms, which is very common in the English speaking world, because what you really mean is, I fire you. I have to let you go is a coward move. When you want to fire someone, at least tell them that you fire them. When you say, I have to let you go, it basically means that the other person has done something wrong. I have to let you go means it's your fault and you force me to remove you. And that's not the case here. Not even a bit. It's all about appreciating what people have done for you. And when you appreciate what they've done, even in times of crisis, and when you face a major financial challenge... People will understand when you openly communicate that you have financial challenge, that sometimes you have to make tough decisions for the sustainable future of your organization. But this will only be accepted when you openly talk about what the issue is and not cover it up in a I have to let you go attitude, which is not backed by facts. We have a couple of moments in Germany as well where people had to take accountability. So the KSK, which is a unit of special forces, it came out that there are hard right-wing tendencies in there. And now the Justice Secretary, Annegret kramp karrenbauer one of these names which neither Germans nor people who speak English are able to pronounce or write correctly. And that's why she's always abbreviated AKK, which sounds a bit like a weapon. So, but Annegret kramp karrenbauer the Justice Secretary, now said that she is going to think about not only to disband the second unit of the Special Forces, and the other three have to be completely restructured, which at the moment they think they will do internally. Not sure if that is a wise decision. Others have done way better in the recent past when it comes to accountability. And now we will talk about a country which you might not have, heard, well, you will have heard about it, but you haven't heard a lot about it in the recent past, Belgium. Belgium, normally known for being the country where the European Union always has their meetings and a country which normally two-thirds of the time, for whatever reason, doesn't really have a government. And by the way, when you look into their, their situation, and it's very complicated with a number of parties, there is a reason why forming government there is a lot more complicated than it might be in your home country. So please don't talk down it. The Belgian king, Philippe. King Philippe accepted the guilt for the injustices happening during colonization in Congo. That is a big step. Many countries have not done so. Many countries have not accepted the guilt. They simply didn't talk about what happened in the past. King Philippe completely accepts that Belgium is accountable for crimes of colonialization in Belgian Congo. That is how you take accountability. But of course, in free enterprise, we have to implement a couple of more steps than just that. And when we look into the UK, we sometimes see moments where you think they take accountability, but then you get a bit of a different picture as soon as you really look behind the scenes. So Boris Johnson offers visa to people from Hong Kong. And that, of course, is communicated in a way that they say there is a history of colonialization and we accept our accountability, our responsibility in this case. So we offer visa to people from Hong Kong. 
well, just by coincidence and with Brexit on the horizon, in Hong Kong you have quite a high number of well-qualified people. So offering visa there might also be a chance for uh, for Britain to get qualified people. And also, when you say there is a history of colonialization and you accept the accountability and the responsibility you, your country has, what about all the other colonies, Mr. Johnson? And the Prime Minister didn't offer visa to any other former colony. So, except, um, no, not except, in, instead of offering visa to all colonies, which of course would have led to major chaos because the Brexit movement is not particularly known for being immigration friendly, they might not even be in favor of the Hong Kong solution at the moment, Boris Johnson was talking about who are the people we need to clap for? Maybe you remember these moments when normally on a, I think in the UK was a, was a Thursday, people just went on the street or Tuesday, people went on the street and clapped. <laughs> Clap for the NHS. Maybe you remember these days. And now Boris Johnson says we should also be thankful for the people who run free enterprise and make everything possible. And the major headline coming out of this amazing statement was clap for bankers. Yes, you heard right. Some people might have thought now, did I just click on the wrong podcast? Is there someone else talking? No. The major headline getting into the news was clap for bankers. You can imagine how well that went down. And sometimes when you talk about accountability, you can take accountability and sometimes you just communicate it the wrong way. I'll just give you an example. Colin McFarlane shared it on Twitter. BBC reporter Jennifer Hill was talking about why, for example, the in infection rates of COVID-19 in Germany were so much lower than, for example, in the UK. And then they were referring to sports. And they took the example of a German team, Eintracht Frankfurt, compared and compared it to the Premier League. And then you have someone on the other end of the microphone and you do an interview with him. And what came out was that BBC reporter Jennifer Hill had to report because that's what was said. Eintracht Frankfurt will be disinfecting their balls at halftime. That is the reason why when you make a statement in a foreign language, you must be very sure what a word can mean. Because disinfecting your balls at half time, I think that is something which people didn't know about. They only washed their hands and that might be the reason why they have a higher infection rate. Of course not. But when you make a statement, be sure that it can come across the wrong way, even without you deliberately trying to do so. And of course, when we just go for the last example before we come to the conclusion, what you should do when it comes to taking accountability in Berlin, we have a club commission, a club commission, and uh, now people from all poli from from all political parties. So we have a cross party agreement where they now stepped up to Mr. Seehofer, who's a secretary in Germany, or the Home Secretary actually. And they stepped up to Mr. Seehofer that they want that clubs will be recognized as cultural places. Cultural places that, of course, entails having a lower VAT rate to pay, which, of course, means you have a higher profit margin. But most of these clubs are not ran professionally for the profit they are ran because they are just deep into the club scene of Berlin. So that would be a major change. It also includes a couple of protection rights. As soon as you are a cultural place, you can't be easily removed. They can't easily just kick you out or rent the place out to someone else. And let's just stick to this now, because often, we'll, often people now, when they heard that, said, is clubbing really a problem we have right now? And here we get to the main point where the problem is. The main point is that every problem we have is often looked at from a monocultural position. I'll just give you an example. You have a situation, you look at the situation. That's good. Then you look at the factual and the emotional side, not only the factual, but also the emotional side. That's even better. So you get a certain impression. And then you want to discuss the impression and make a decision. And what the problem now is, often people who are in a leadership position, they discuss it only in their so-called circles, which means... People who are quite alike, normally a board of directors or a board of team leaders, all from the same background, with the same experience, same level of education, same situation when it comes to income. And then you make a decision and you still wonder why it didn't go down too well. The main point is when you make a monocultural point of view, the foundation of your decision, you just set the clock to the point that you can only think when Will it fire back at you? Not even if. So how do you do it better? There are three major steps you have to undertake when it comes to taking accountability in leadership. So step number one, 
are real consequences. And I tell you what is not a real consequence. A real consequence is not when you start like this. <clears throat> We're going to investigate the matter, and after we found everything we needed to find out, we get back to you with a new idea of how we approach the situation in the future. People know these statements, and they are fed up with it. A real consequence, for example, could be you fire someone. That doesn't mean that you have to fire someone, but it could be one option. It could also be you demote someone or you remove someone from that position. You open a new unit. For example, most compliance departments were opened up after major and major misbehavior happened over and over again. So compliance departments became more and more important for the future to keep things under control in the corporate and complex environment. So a real consequence must be something where people see this really happened. You can't go for all talk, no trousers. So step one, real consequences. When you say there's a new beginning, so for example, the new normal, you may have heard about that for sure. A new beginning must be one, and I give you an example of something where it went all wrong. There was a German car company, automobile company, and they had a major scandal about emissions. You may have heard about them. Uh, of course, now some people will say, didn't they all have that sort of scandal? Well, at the end, they many of them had, let's just put it that way. Many, if not all of them, were involved. But one company was the first one, and therefore, they were in press. So when you now say, we have a new beginning, and that's, for example, something they said there, what really happens is that within the conglomerate of large corporations, people move from the controlling board of directors to the supervisory board, to the real board, to the main board, to a sub board. But basically what happened was on the senior leadership level, you just exchange people, move them from one location to the other, and they were all in very powerful position. They just moved from one brand, which is in, inside your corporation, to another brand. It sounds like it's a new beginning, but especially... And transparent and connected times, you will quickly find out that this new beginning is not really a new beginning. You're only protecting your own network. And that is something which is not a new beginning and that will fire back to you immediately. When you say we have a new beginning, it means you have to cut somewhere, you have to exchange people, or you have to put new people in place. You have either new people, new processes, new locations, new department, something which is actually new. Because people immediately see when you try to trick them. It's not hard to find out. Press will do the job for you. And step number three, specific steps. Specific steps means that as soon as you say we're going to do something about it, you tell them what this will be. And I give you an example of how to do it wrong and how to do it right. A wrong example would be there must be steps implemented and we will consider them in the future after an in-depth organizational assessment. And at the end of this, we will implement a couple of steps which normally means blah, 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 blah. And at the end, you put some minor steps in so you can say, oh, we did something. How to do it right is that you, for example, say, we now saw that the process we have in place is unsuitable for real world practice. Therefore, we put together a committee that investigates that for the next 90 days. After these 90 days, and this, this committee, of course, has people from all different levels of hierarchy, not only from top level. So everyone who's affected has a say in the new process. At the end of the investigation, the old process will be taken away and the new process will be in place. This will be completed until the 1st of October 2020. That is a specific step. Unfortunately, many people fear to do so because it limits their own power and also you have to commit to something. And what you really hope for in many situations is that just some other scandal happens, you just get out of press and then people just care about something else. Three major steps you have to do right now when it comes to accountability. Step number one, real consequences. Step number two, real new beginning. Step number three, specific steps and announce them properly. I wish you all the best when implementing this in your organization. And for today, thank you very much for your time.